Viva Las Vegas Viva Las Vegas How I wish that there were more than the 24 hours in the day As a magician, you're taking stuff that doesn't exist and making it very, very real, and that's what I do. Um, I try to take magic and do it in a very uh, uh, important way uh, to give the audience an experience they can really laugh about and forget about their problems, give them a little bit of hope, and also have fun in the process. The bucket, perfect, don't move, just like that. Webster, let's do it! <laughs> I started doing magic when I was um, about eight years old. I started developing magic, started inventing it. It became very easy to me. It's one of those things I kind of had a knack for, and I haven't stopped. You know, I was uh, teaching magic at NYU when I was 16 years old. And the first day I walked into the wrong classroom. I was very nervous. All the kids were older than me. And I started teaching the wrong class magic. And they didn't stop me. I started teaching about fooling people and misdirection and so forth. And it turned out to be a political science class, so it fit right in. I have done a lot of very big, spectacular things. When we went to China, and I walked through the Great Wall of China, it was the first time cameras were allowed in a lot of those locations. This is a, an amazing thing. And we had collaborated with the Chinese government. We were allowed in the Temple of Heaven and the Forbidden City before anybody else. And I walked through the Great Wall of China. There were thousands of people there. It was an amazing feeling. And you know, since I've been back, it's I've been back there many times performing and doing my show and the transformation over the past 15, 20 years is astonishing. You know? make the audience believe is very important. It's a big challenge because um, you have to disarm them, I think. You have to let them know that you're not trying so hard, that you're one of them. I dress very casually in my show. There's no tuxedos, no spangles. There's very little scenery. I do things very elementally so they can really relate to things I'm doing and touching. I use them on stage a lot. Tons of people come up on stage, dozens of people come on stage at random during the show. So that all helps with the believability. So now we're going to take 13 men and women from the audience. You will be selected at random. We're going to hang you in the air and make you disappear. Is that cool or what? Yeah. Thirty people who are randomly selected from the audience. We bounce balls in the audience. Everyone gets a chance. They come up on stage and we vanish them. We've done the illusion for about four years now. I do about 500 shows a year. We've vanished thousands and thousands, like over 25,000 people. Pretty amazing, and none of them have revealed any secrets, or I don't think they, quite frankly, they know. Constantly doing new things. So we get a lot of local people coming to the show here. A lot of people know that when they come to see a David Copperfield show, there are always going to be new surprises and new things. We added something new in the show today, and tomorrow we're adding something new in the show tomorrow. 
other people here in Las Vegas have an hour or two hours of material, but because of television, because of my CBS specials, um, because of the fact that I tour so much and play the same cities year after year, I have to come up, I'm forced to come up with new things all the time. I have about 25 hours of material that we've developed. To give you an idea, I mean, Houdini in his day had an hour and a half of material for his whole lifetime. It takes two years to develop each illusion. On an average, sometimes seven years, sometimes less. But just about two years for each illusion, for each five minute or 10 minute illusion takes, you know, a full two years of work. My show here in Las Vegas at the MGM really involves people's dreams. So I interview people all the time and I ask them, uh, you know, what, if you could make anything happen, what would it be? Uh, if you could change something, what would it be? And people really think about it and I take their thoughts and reinterpret them into my show. People do dream about traveling around the world to Hawaii or to a deserted island. So I take those themes and I make them happen in my show. When was the last time you spoke to your dad? About two years. Two years ago. Well, we just spoke to him and he did have one request. And that is, if we get to Hawaii, and I hope that we do, that I take a picture of you to send to him. Is that cool? All right, good. Let's see how they're doing in Hawaii right now. There it is, our little island, right off the coast of Hawaii. Nobody dreams about pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Nobody dreams about uh, making an elephant disappear, or even the Statue of Liberty disappear. Uh, but people do dream about people being reunited with a loved one they haven't seen in a while, a living loved one they haven't seen in a while. All done with magic. Check it out. The only thing holding us up is a crane arm that's literally two inches thick. We've got people beneath us, people on the sides of us, people behind us. There's a mirror so you can see from behind. So you know that nothing can enter or leave this space without being seen. This is no camera trick or computer effect. In fact, come to any show on my tour and you'll see this live with different people every night. And tonight is your night. We got to take that picture for your dad. Close your eyes and imagine your perfect place. I keep evolving. You know, I have more specials in the works for CBS. I'm constantly coming up with new things for my show, trying to push the envelope, really take magic in big new directions. And it keeps exciting for me. Give it to that guy over there. You know, every night I watch people crying in the audience and really touched by a lot of the stories that we tell with the magic. And that really motivates me. I think what separates my show than other shows, you will laugh a lot, you will cry a lot, you'll sing, see things you won't believe that are very spectacular, and I think you go out of the, the theater wanting to come back. Most of my audience comes back again, hopefully not just to figure out the magic. Our repeat customers are enormous, and uh, we're really proud of that. I hope people uh, believe that nothing is impossible because mostly that's true. I think uh, if you can dream it, if you work hard at it, if you really focus on it, you can make it happen. And you know, I prove that every night in my show. You know, I watch people that are really jaded. I watch presidents and kings sit there and they go oh, like this. They're really, you know, awestruck. <laughs> 